right before spring break, we started studying angle relationships. And that was an introduction to this larger topic that we're in. And what we looked at was really two angles and how they could be related to one another. So if we look at the top left, one of the first ones that we studied were two angles that had to share a vertex and a side and couldn't overlap. If you look at those two, they appear right next to each other. And remember, we called those adjacent angles. And even outside of math class, adjacent means right next to. If we look on the right, top right, this is a special case of adjacent angles. If I look, they still share a vertex, they still share a ray, and they're not overlapping. They're still right next to each other. This is special, though, because if you look, they create a 90-degree angle and therefore have a sum of 90 degrees. Remember, those are complementary angles. So complementary is a special type of adjacent where they would create a 90 degree right angle together. In the bottom left, similarly, these two are also still adjacent to one another, but this time they form a straight line which we know has a sum of 180 degrees. If you remember, these were supplementary angles. The last one, very different from what we've seen before, that last one, Almost has two intersecting lines, and we were looking at the two angles that are across from one another instead of right next to each other. We found that those are always equal in measure, and we call those vertical angles. So before spring break, we were looking at these four and figuring out how to use what we knew about them to find missing values or to find x. Continuing with our angles, we're going to start looking at specifically triangles for a while and everything we know about angles from a triangle. So you should have just gotten a new foldable and we're going to fill out the first two flaps here um, from this video. So the first flap is just on triangle angle vocabulary. So if you look on that left side, we're just going to point out what interior angles exterior angles, and then remote interior angles are. So we're not writing definitions, more so just labeling them on each picture. So if we think of the word interior, that means inside. So these are the angles inside of a triangle. So if I'm labeling here, they would be this one, this one, and that one. So those are the interior angles, the one on the inside of the figure. You could probably guess then that exterior angles would be the ones on the outside of a figure. So looking at this triangle, that would be these angles on the outside right here. Remote interior angles are probably the newest to you. And when we're talking about remote interior angles, we know they're going to be the, on the inside from that interior but remote is in relationship to one of the exterior angles. So let's kind of star this exterior angle in your notes. That exterior angle has two remote interior angles, and those would be the two interior angles almost on the opposite side of the figure. So the remote interior angles to this exterior one that we starred would be the ones over on the opposite side. So looking on the other side of the flaps, now we're just going to label and kind of practice those. If we look at our interior angles, again, we're thinking the ones on the inside. Ignore the text that I just got. And so that would be angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3. Exterior angles in this figure, there's only one, and that would be angle 4 there on the outside. So if we're thinking about angle 4, since it's that exterior angle, it would have two remote interior ones. So thinking on the opposite side of the figure, so that would make it angle 1 and angle 2. If you have to pause it to get all that down before moving to the next one, do so now. Looking at the second flap of your foldable, it's talking about the interior angle theorem, and this is specifically for triangles. So in every single triangle, no matter if it's equilateral, a right triangle, isosceles, big, small, whatever, all triangles have an interior angle sum of 180 degrees. Every single triangle. So if you need to highlight that, like I just did, or star it, do something to make that 180 stand out to you. 
So looking at this first example that we're going to walk through together, we can use the fact that we know all three interior angles of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees to find missing values. So if we look at this first one, we're going to add all three angles together. So I would start setting it up as 77 plus 54 plus x and set that equal to a sum of 180 degrees. Now looking at this, I can definitely combine like terms here with a 77 and 54. So adding those two would give me 131. And I still have this x here all still equal to 180 degrees. If I go to solve that then, I can subtract 131 from each side, giving me x by myself and with a total of 49 degrees. So we know that that angle has to be 49 degrees in order for the triangle to have a sum of 180. If we look at example two, it starts to get a little more complex because instead of just angle measures, we now have expressions for each angle. But I'm still gonna set it up the same, which is to add all three together. So I would have seven x plus four x plus five, plus six x plus five, and again, I'm gonna set that equal to 180. I definitely wanna simplify this, so I'll combine all of my x terms first, and that gets me to 17x. Then I'm gonna go and combine any constants that I have, and I really only have the two of a five here and a five here. So now I have 17x plus 10, that looks much simpler, and I have space now to solve that. So first I would subtract 10 from each side, leaving me with 17x equal to 170. I would divide by 17, giving me a final of x equals 10 degrees. If I wanted to, if it asked me, let's say, for the measure of angle S. If I look, angle S here is 7x, so I could use the x that we just calculated to find what that specific angle would have to be. So I would do 7 times 10, and that would tell me that angle S has to be 70 degrees, just as an example. Let's do two more examples of each kind, just since this is still new. So looking at this one, we have triangle dog. I like to spell things. And again, I'm gonna add each angle together. So 92 plus 51 plus x, and set it equal to a sum of 180 degrees. Combining like terms here with a 92 and 51, I'm gonna get 143 plus x would be equal to 180. So subtracting 143 from each side, would tell me that that x angle would have to be 37 degrees. The next one again has more expressions in each angle, not as bad as the first one from your foldable. Still gonna solve them by setting them, or adding them together and setting them equal to 180 degrees. So this time 4x plus 4x plus 84 equal to 180. Start by combining like terms here, this time with x. So that would give me 8x plus 84 equal to 180. Solving now by subtracting 84 from each side, leaving me with 8x and, ooh, what would that be, 96? So when I divide by 8, I get that x would have to be 12 degrees. So if you look at my triangle, you'll notice that not a single angle is just x by itself. So if we look here, that follow-up question says, what was the measure of angle A? Well, angle A here says that A would be 4 times x. And now that I know what x is, I can do 4 times 12, which would say that the measure of angle A would have to be 48 degrees. Next, you're going to practice this on your own. Good luck, and always remember, triangles have an interior angle sum of 180 degrees.